So the, the big landmarks we're looking for here are looking up at that CT junction, because this is the region that we're going to, to work at. And then we want to follow it all the way down to the TL junction. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're just going to rotate the neck away and side bend and palpate brachial plexus. You know when you palpate the brachial plexus, anterior scalene is in the front, middle scalene is below. And if you palpate them all the way down and side bend the head this way, you're going to get onto the first rib. We know up at the CT junction here, if we can find C7 and we find this is where T3 usually would be, if we come up in line from the, uh, the scapula, you're going to find that posterior tubercle that's embedded within the trap of the first rib. So then as you palpate, you're going to basically scoop the tissue up so that you're on the posterior tubercle of the first rib, body of the rib with your index finger, and then they can breathe in and out, and you can feel the rib move. So that's the first rib. Now what we'll do is we'll just go up to the CT junction, and you're just going to palpate the spinous processes all the way down, realizing they angle down further. They're going to have anomalies, so some may go to the left, some may go to the right. But as, as you palpate down, especially in the upper part of the spine, you can just have your lab model bring their head down, and you should be able to feel movement in the inner spinous space. As you get down below T3, T4, you might have to have them cross their arms. And get into the inner spinous space that way. And just kind of count your way down. Just so that you know where those different landmarks are as far as the spinous processes are. When his arms are to the crossed low, we can follow the 12th rib up to where we think the TL junction is. When you're getting at the TL junction, you're going to have a long spinous process. You know that's typically the lumbar spine because it's the first long spinous process after a short spinous process. And you can have your lab partner rotate and just kind of see if you feel motion. Just say, is there motion, is there not motion? And you should be able to feel some of that motion as you work your way up. You can feel that rotation all the way up till you get to about T6, T7. Well, you could feel that rotation all the way up to the CT junction. But when you get to T6, T7, you can also just have your lab partner stay still and have them rotate their head and see if you feel motion of the vertebra. So yeah, and you're just kind of feeling for, is there motion, isn't there? You're not going to say, oh, it's moving into your lateral inferior, etc. And then the last thing you're going to do is just move the skin right on either side of the spinous processes and see if you feel like there's increased muscle tone on both sides. So you're just going to move the skin at first. You can start with just doing some skin rolling just to see if there's any change in color, because that might be like if it's more red over one area, when you roll the skin, that could be a, a sensitive segment. But otherwise, you're just finding the spinous process, bringing your fingers on either side and moving the skin to see if you're feeling an area where there might be a tight band. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So that's what we want to look for first, just to identify broad landmarks in the thoracic spine.